Welcome to the Good News Online Kids Bible Camp. My name is Elizabeth. And I'm Marcus. And we are so thankful that you could join us today. Are you ready to have some fun? If you are, then you've come to the right place. Yes, and we understand that you cannot go outside to play with your friends because of the coronavirus. But that's why we hosted this show for you and all the Southern African children. Yes, so if you're a kid from Southern Africa and if you're from Good News Mission, we want to welcome you and we want to thank you and tell you that you should get ready to have fun today. So are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. So let's go. Woo! Okay, so before we start, there's something very important that we need to do. What is that? We need to pray. Okay, so let's close those precious eyes of ours and let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you that we can be part of this special program. As we worship and listen to you today, we thank you, Lord, that you are here with us. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes. Well, Brother Marcus, thank you very much for that beautiful prayer. Now we're going to go straight into our program with song and dance. For God so loved the world. Yes. So get up, stand up from your chairs if you are sitting down, and let's dance and learn this amazing song. Your heart, I five. 
And then again, for God the world, God the world, God the world, He gave His only Son. Now we're gonna sing this hymn song with motion all together. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Motion ready? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Clap, clap, 
From Pastor Samuel Kim from the Good News Mission Malawi Church. Yes, so kids, let's all take our ears and listen very closely. Hello, everyone. Uh, nice to meet you. Uh, my name is Pastor uh, Samuel Kim. Uh, today, I'll be your a teacher to help you to understand the word from the Bible. Uh, first of all, let us read one passage uh, from the Bible. Today we're going to look into the book of Genesis chapter 25. Genesis chapter 25 from verse 23 up to verse 27. Uh, Children, if you are able to find the Bible, why don't we open together so that we can read together. Okay, are you ready then? Genesis chapter 25, verse 23. And the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb. Two people shall be separated from your body. One people shall be stronger than the other. And the older shall serve the younger. So when her days were fulfilled, for her to give birth, indeed there was a twins in her wombs. And the first came out red, he was like a hairy garment all over, so they called his name Esau. Afterward, his brother came out and his hand took hold of Esau's heel. So his name was called Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when she bore them. So the boys grew, and Esau was a skillful hunter and a man of a field, but Jacob was a mild man dwelling in tents. Yes, up to verse 27, we have read. Uh, everyone, do you know about this story? This story is about two children, two children who were born in one day, and there were twins. Now, it's a story how they came out into this world, but interesting is, there is a secret, a hidden meaning about their birth. Now, before the mother, whose name was Rebecca, before she gave the birth to these two children, God gave her a vision saying that when your two children are born, you will see that there will be an older son and the younger son, but the younger will be above the older. In other words, the older brother will happen to serve the younger. Now, the mother, Rebecca, was very curious. Why did God choose the older to serve the younger? In other words, the second born among the twins will become greater one, and the older one will become the less. Everyone, isn't it interesting? It's not that they have done anything wrong. It's not that they have done any um, crime or misbehaving or anything wrong yet. God has divided these two different children's path. Now, interesting is, from the birth on this day, the mother Rebecca is able to clearly see why. And this shows the heart of God in his selection, in his choices. Everyone, when you are eating ice cream, 
everybody has different types of flavors. The flavors you like, right? Yes, some children will might like vanilla flavor. Some children will might like chocolate flavor. Some people might like strawberry flavor. Isn't that right? Yes, what flavor do you like? Well, keep it to yourself because I cannot buy you one from here. But anyways, let's go on with the story. Just like that, everyone, we have to be selected by God if we want to be blessed by Him. Do you understand? Blessed? Yes, meaning that God can give us good things in our life. So therefore, if you want to be blessed, now let's think to ourselves. Who are the people among our children? Who are the among us who can be blessed by God? Who is the one who can bring good things to you? Who is the one who can be good, who can be give, awarded with a lot of gifts? Now you might think, ah, oh, yes, pastor, I know the answer. The one who studies well, the one who goes to school, the one who works very hard, the one who listens to his mother or his father, the one who behaves well should be the one to be blessed. You might think like that. Well, not bad for your answer. But everyone, sometimes we have to understand just because we think like that, it does not mean that our answer is right. Well, God wanted to show how He makes His selections. Well, God said that the younger will be greater and the older brother should be younger, right? Well, it happened that when these two children were born, the first son came out and they saw that his body was all covered with hair already from birth. So they called, decided to call his name Esau. Now Esau was a very strong man. He was a, he was a hunter. And you know in those days they had to hunt for animals and to find food and to eat. So Esau was a very talented hunter. Also very strong. And by, here the Bible says that he was loved for his huntings and his cookings. In other words, not only was he good in hunting, he also made very tasty food and gave it to his parents. And he was loved for his great talents. Now, in the other hand, here there was a second born child. Now, interesting is, from already the birth, when this baby, the second child, was coming out, the life is very interesting. Do you know what happened? Well, when the firstborn son, Esau, came out, this secondborn child had no strength to come out or to push himself from his mother's womb or kick out from his mother's womb to come out into this world. So what did he do then? What he has done, he went and he held the hands of the heel. You know the heel? Our heel here, under, just above our feet. There is our heel, right? Yes, the second born child held the heel of his older brother. Hey brother, don't leave me here. I want to go with you. And he held onto that brother's heel. And then he was pulled out together with his older brother Esau. That's why they saw this second-born child and they knew that he was very weak. Everyone, as you run, as you play, do you know what is the most weakest part of our body? It is our heel. Therefore, you should be very careful when you run and play because sometimes you might fall down and hurt your heel. Then, although you want to run and play, you realize that having a wounded heel will be very difficult to walk and you'll be weeping. So therefore, children, you must be very careful to protect your heel. So watch where you run and watch where you walk. Now, let's go back to this story. So, the second born child that came out holding the heel of his older brother, they decided to call his name Jacob. It means that he's weak, a man who is powerless, 
who is weak, who needs protection. So here where we read today, it's telling us that Esau was a skillful hunter and a man of a field. But Jacob was just a mild man. He had no strength and he dwelt in tent hiding. In other words, he worked, sorry to say like this, but he worked like a girl. Although he was a boy, he was weak like a girl. So everyone, then why is it that God decided to bless Jacob, the second born, who is weak? Why not, did not God decide to bless Esau, who is strong and very skillful? Well, here, we can only understand this by understanding the heart of God. Well, you ask yourself, why is it that you like vanilla? I like chocolate. Well, guess what? People have different tastes, different selections, right? So, in this case, it is God up there who blesses us. It is God up there who can reward us. So, everyone, just doing what you think is good is not going to bless you. We need to understand what is the heart of God. The heart of God up there who looked down to us. Right? So understanding that heart and knowing that that heart can be different from my thoughts. It's very important that we understand this. Yes. Now today, to add on to this explanation, I'm going to explain to you a very interesting story. Yes. If you look here, this story is titled... The painter and the beggar. Yes, everyone, you like stories, right? Yes. Why don't you follow me along and listen, and we'll understand what this story is trying to tell us. Now, long time ago, in a small village, there was a one man whose job was a painter. One day, he opened the Bible and started to read. As he was reading, he read Luke chapter 15. Do you know what comes out in the book of Luke chapter 15 in the Bible? Yes, it's a story about two sons. But the second son, again the second son, he, ran a, he went away from his father asking his father for the possessions that were fallen to him. And he went, took that and went to a far country and then he, there he wasted in living a reckless life, playing games, just drinking and playing around. Yes, he lived a very bad life. But one day, he realized something very important. Why did I become so a mess like this? Why did I become such a failure like this? He realized the reason was because I have left my father. So he decides to go back to his father. Now, by that time, his clothes were all dirty, all torn, and he was all looking very shabby. He could not wash for some months, and he could not eat. He was so hungry. He came back like a beggar. But the father saw him, and the father ran. Son, where were you all this time? Actually, the father was waiting for him, and then he hugged him, and he kissed him. So that was the story this painter was reading. So he saw, as he finished reading the story, wow, this is very beautiful. The father loves the son regardless of how weak, how lacking, how dirty he is. Everyone, what do you think about your parents? Yes, your parents probably loves you, even though sometimes you make mistakes, sometimes you do wrong. Sometimes you become dirty playing outside. Still, our parents love us, right? Yes, we can feel the heart of God there. But now this painter thought, yeah, this picture would be very nice. When the son came back and the father meets him and hug him, and then they live happily. This is a very beautiful picture. So one day he took out a piece of paper and he started to draw. But no matter how much he's trying to draw the picture, he could not draw very nicely because he's imagining, how will his eyes look? How will look his nose? How should I draw his mouth? What about his hair? 
Will it be long like animal because he couldn't get hair cut? Or oh, what, ki what kind of clothes? Where will it be torn? To imagine all this to draw, it was not realistic. It was not very good in drawing the picture. So he fell into deep thoughts. Hmm, how can I draw this in very realistically, like a real life? Oh, what can I do? So this made him to become fall into big concern, big worries. Now one day, he was walking down the village and thought, hmm, how can I finish this picture? I want to express the love of God. I want to express the love of the Father. But how will I draw this well? And then as he was still thinking about this picture as a painter, it happened that he heard a sound. Excuse me, sir. Give me money, sir. Please help me. Support for the need. Support for the need. Excuse me, sir. Help the beggar. Please, sir. There was a one young man who was there sitting on one side of the street begging for money. At the moment, the painter saw his face. Hey, and got the idea. That person is the right character who I should draw in this picture. So right away, he had a brilliant idea. Yes, then that's right. If I invite him to my house, and the way how he's, he is, probably he is the closest to this picture. He's the closest, like the prodigal son who left the father. So he went near to the beggar. Hey, young man. Suddenly, the beggar lifted up his face. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, yes. What? Did I do something wrong? No, you did not do anything wrong. But let me suggest you something. Yes, what is it? I want you to become my model. What? What? A model? Yes, if you become my model and come to my house, I'll going to, I'm going to draw a painting, a drawing, a picture of you. If you do that, allow me to draw a picture of you, I'll give you money for this. Then with that money, you can buy clothes, you can buy food, and you have enough food to eat. Suddenly, the young man was very happy. Wow, but for what? I'm nothing, I'm just a beggar. Yes, that's fine, but I want to draw a picture of you. So the painter handed over his contacts and the address. Here, this is my number and this is place where you can find me. So please, come. I will draw a picture of you. All right? Yes, sir. For sure, I will come. I want to be a model. I want you to draw me so that I can paint. Yes, I'll be happy too. So they have agreed. Now the days have passed. Finally, the D-Day, the day that the painter had promised to meet with the beggar, came about. Now the painter was very excited. Now he was sitting down thinking, hmm, yeah, will he be sitting? Will he be kneeling? How should I draw? And he was very excited. And he was thinking, imagining how nicely this picture will come out. And more important thing is that this picture will present the heart the love of God from Luke chapter 15. So he was very excited. Suddenly, at that moment, there was a knock. Knock at the door. Ah, oh, I guess his has come. So quickly, the painter went out. And then he opened the door. When he opened the door, there was a one young man standing outside. He wondered, well, who is this man? So the painter asked, excuse me, who are you? Suddenly, that young man said, Oh, sir, it's me. You, we have the, made the promise, we have made the agreement to come on this day. Yes, it's true. I know that I have invited someone, but I don't know who you are. Sir, you don't remember me? Yes, who are you? Well, I was the young man who was in the streets begging for money that day. What? The beggar? Yes, I am the beggar who you invited me to draw a picture of me. Oh yes, I remember that, but 
Who are you? Suddenly the beggar said, Oh yes, I thought now coming to your house with that dirty clothes and smelly shoes and dirty hair, I thought that is not appropriate. So I decided to shape it up a little bit, comb the hair, wash my face, and go to the river, wash my clothes. And I am now here so that I can be appropriate for this painting. Suddenly the painter was very angry. What? I did not invite you just because I want to draw you. I invited you because I want you to present the prodigal son, the son who came back after he failed, after he lost everything. Suddenly, this became a big shock, dismayed this young man. What? You want to draw me with dirty clothes? You want to draw me with dirty face, with the dirty hair? Yes! Because that can represent our heart, the dirty heart, the messy life. But now, look at you. You have combed your hair, wash your face, wash your clothes, and you have messed up my, my picture now. And sorry to say this, but young man, I cannot use you. Suddenly that moment, all the hopes, oh, with the money if I get paid today, yeah, with all this money, oh, I'll buy clothes, I'll start to try to buy things and sell and make business, I'll buy food, oh, and then what should I eat first? Oh, should I eat chicken? Oh, should I go and eat bread? Oh, should I buy myself a good cold drink? All these dreams and hopes that this young man had suddenly start to fly away. Everyone, that's right. When this painter invited this young man, it was not because he liked him or he was neat or he was nice to draw. There was something that painter wanted to prove. There was something that painter wanted to describe in his paintings. What did he want to describe in the painting? He wanted to describe our human's heart. How dirty, how weak, how lacking people we are. So he wanted God in the image of a father who is very loyal, who looks very clean and nice, very gracious. And the son should be very dirty and filthy looking all shabby with messed up hair. That was the picture he was imagining all this time. Now, students, let me ask you. When this beggar have come to this house, what was the problem? Problem is, he did not think about the heart of this painter. Yes, he did not know what is the heart of the painter. That's why he thought cleaning himself, wearing clean clothes, would make the painter be happy. But in fact, that made the painter to be angry. Why? Because it does not match to the painting that he wanted to draw. Interesting, right? Everyone, it was a very good thing that this beggar can get along with the new life, getting paid with money just to draw a picture of him becoming a model. But, if we do not understand the heart of the painter who wants to draw us, if we do not want to understand that heart, we can come up to mess up this relationship. Yes, that's right, everyone. When the, when the painter went to call this young man, there was a heart, there was his thinking. And he did not want him to come to him as a changed person or as a clean or nice person. He wanted him as the way he is, weak, lacking, shabby like a beggar. Now, what can we learn from this story? Children, before you think what is good, before you think that what is best, ah, uh, if I want to be blessed, I want to be awarded by God, then let's think I should be a good boy, a good girl, a good student. I should study hard. I should listen to my parents. Everyone, that is the way how we understand in this world. But, 
God up there in heaven is different from our hearts. Everyone, therefore, we have to understand the heart of God first. Yes, that's right. If we do not understand the heart of God, we try to make ourselves clean, try to work out, try to make myself like neat. But God, will, you will not be selected because that's not God's choice. Secondly, our thoughts can be wrong. Yes, that's right. Everyone, children, whatever you do, whenever you play sports, let's say you're playing football, you want to be the best, right? And you want to be the one to score, right? If you're studying in school, you want to be the first in class, right? And for our young girls, if you play, uh, if you want to look pretty, you want to look be the most beautiful girl in the school, right? Yes, that's right. We all have that desire to be the best, wanting to be the most prettiest. But everyone, do you think that God wants that from us? Everyone, because we want to be best with our desires, we cannot use this, our heart, to go and find God's grace. Then what? Everyone, Bible is telling us. Here, number three, being weak can lead us to grace. Everyone, when this painter came to call the beggar, it was not because he was very handsome or very rich or very strong or very good looking. He was chosen because he matched to the picture that the painter wanted to draw. Now, everyone, winding up with the story of Jacob and Esau. The older should serve the younger, God said. Well, because God's selection, according to God's heart, falls to the one who is weak, who is lacking, who is dirty and filthy. Yet, everyone, although we are weak and lacking, still God wants to embrace us. But people think, ah, I have to be skillful, like Esau, be a good hunter, to be loved by my father and be loved by God. But in fact, his thoughts were wrong. Everyone, why did not God choose Esau? Why did God choose Jacob? Because God does not need a skillful hunter. Because all the love, all the strength is inside God. Therefore, he, has, he wants to give his talent. He wants to give his grace. He wants to give his gift to us. But if we are saying, I'm skillful, I'm strong, I can be good. And if you're trying to receive this because of your talents, God does not like that. What? I thought I have to be best. Yes, in schools, you are required to do good. But in front of God, the Bible tells us He chooses those who are weak, those who are lacking, those who need grace. Everyone like this beggar, instead of coming out to understand God's heart with your thoughts, why don't we take this time to think about what is God's selection? How does God choose His people to bless? Yes, that's right. He chooses those who are weak, who are lacking, like Jacob. Because to them, God can show His powers. And when they are well, when they become saved, when they are strong, they can say, Oh, God help me. Because God has led me. Because God has strengthened me. But everyone, Esau does not need the strength of God because he himself thinks I am strong without God. Everyone, if we think that we are strong and good without God, do you think God can choose you? Do you think God can bless you? No. Therefore, first, we have to think, what is God's choice? Who does God choose? Those who are weak like Jacob. Yes, that's right. The ones who are weak. And it's not wrong to be weak. But my thoughts tell me I have to be good. No, your thoughts can be wrong. Everyone, your thoughts is not always right. Thirdly, God likes people who are weak because He can give His grace, His gift to them. But if those who are strong and those who are talented, that gift 
is not free if it comes a reward with price. Well, God wants to give us freely. Now, everyone, as we come along, as we go along, you learn more about God's heart. And when our hearts and God's heart can match together, to meet together, surely you'll become very happy children and become the most blessed children. Thank you for listening. I hope that you continue and listen well from our camp and find the true joy and happiness in your life. I was Pastor Samuel Kim. Then see you next time. Wow, that was such an amazing message. I really enjoyed it. I hope you guys had fun listening to the Word of Wisdom. Yes, and with the Word of Wisdom, we have come to the end of today's program. But don't be worried. You don't need to stop there. Next up, you can have some family Bible study with your family at home. But before we go, we have an amazing announcement for you. Yes, we're giving away a precious gift. And how you can enter to receive this precious gift is to post your testimony on Facebook or you can send your testimony and pictures through WhatsApp to your branch pastor. Yes, and thank you for joining us. Don't forget, same place, same time, tomorrow again. Bye! Bye.